Welcome everybody. My name is Saskia and I'm one of the co-leads of the GTN. And in this video, I will show you how you can contribute to the GTN uh, using Gitpod. Now, if you want to make changes to the GTN, either add your own tutorial or just make changes to an existing tutorial, um, you often want to, to make these changes and already get a preview of what the resulting website would look like. Um, now you can do this several ways. So you can uh, do this locally on your computer. You would need to install some, some um, components, um, but you can also do it completely online using Gitpod. And that's what I'll show you today. Uh, we have training materials for this. I will show you now how to get there. So from the homepage, you see here on the right at the bottom, we have a section for contributing to the Galaxy training materials. Here we have multiple tutorials, and here you see the one we will do today, running the GTN website online using Gitpod. Now, before we can do this, we are going to uh, set up Gitpod. I'll familiarize you a little bit with the Gitpod workspace. Um, I'll show you how you can build the GTN website inside Gitpod and view any changes you make. Um, and then I'll show you how you can save all your work back to GitHub so that you can maybe make a pull request um, to add this to the, the GTN. Okay, so let's set up Gitpod. First thing you'll need to do is have a fork of the GTN GitHub repository. Um, if you haven't done this yet, you can do this by going to the, um, the GTN GitHub repository here. And then at the top, you will see here these buttons and one of them will say fork. And if you click on that button, um, so I already have a fork, so it shows me I've already got one, but you will, it'll make one for you if you don't have one yet. And then you will see something like this. So you'll see um, your own username, training material, and here you see an exact copy of the GTN repository. Um, now, so we're, what we're going to do, we're going to copy already this link, the URL to um, to your fork. So it'll be something like github.com uh, slash username slash training material, because we need to tell Gitpod that. Okay, so once you have your fork, uh, we can open Gitpod. Now, one more thing, if you already had a fork previously, um, there's a box here showing you how you can make sure that this fork you have is completely up to date with GTN. Um, and that's always a good idea to do before you start. So let's say you made a fork last month. Any changes that happened in the last month to the GTN, you will, will not automatically be um, part of your fork, but you'll have to refresh it. And um, yeah, there are pretty easy ways you can do this. So if you already had a fork, please uh, look at this box and follow those steps. Okay, if you have your fork and it's all up to date, let's go to Gitpod. So um, open gitpod.io in your browser. Gitpod.io. And this is a home page. I will go log in at the top right. And this is super easy. You can log in just with your GitHub account. I'll press this button. And if you're already in this browser session, log into GitHub. It'll automatically uh, bring you here and log you in. If you're not, it'll ask you for your GitHub username and password. So then you're brought to your workspaces uh, overview. So you see that I don't have anything active right now. And it already tells you how you can start something. And it's super easy. You just do gitpod.io slash hash, and then the URL of your uh, GitHub repository. Uh, so in this case, the fork of the GTN. So we'll just do what it says. We'll go gitpod.io hashtag, and then we paste um, the URL of our GTN fork. And now it will um, configure our environment. So it'll copy um, all the files from the fork. It'll, do, it'll install some things that it needs to, to run the website. So this can take a couple minutes. Um, so now would be a great time to, to get a cup of coffee or tea or whatnot. Um, so a couple minutes here is not, not strange. Now, after a while, it 
has started up and then you will see this workspace. Um, at the bottom here you have a terminal and you see that it went straight into installing some um, dependencies here. Um, but after it's done, okay, so it's done for me now. It took another minute or so. Um, but then you can, this is just a, um, a command line that you can type uh, commands into. Okay, and then on the left, you see all, is a file browser, you see all the files from the GTN repository. So this is your own copy. And then in the middle, um, you can edit files and get a preview. So on the left here, so let's say we want to see uh, what's in the contributors.yaml file. We can click on that and then it opens in a text editor um, in the middle and we can, we can type things in and so forth. Okay, so um, whenever you want to make a change to GTN, you want to see, you see the effect of that change and how it looks uh, on the website. So let's uh, start a preview of the website and then make a change so that we can see how this looks. So to do that, it is a simple command here in the uh, terminal portion of the workspace. You say make serve dash git pod. And you hit enter. And then you see it starts building the website. And this should take 30 seconds or so. And it should automatically open a preview window in here. And you see on the right here, a little preview of the file you currently have open. And here you can browse the structure of the GTN. So all our tutorials are under this topics folder, then grouped by topic and so forth. So you see now here in the terminal that the building is done. It says that the server is running. Now Gitpod doesn't automatically know where our homepage is. So you might see something like this and then just say, try again. Um, and then you'll get this. GTN error page. Again, it doesn't, it's not a very smart browser. But if we click on here, we see preview of the GTN web page. So let's say you spotted an error in one of the tutorials. You want to make a change uh, and you want to preview that change. So we're going to pretend that we want to um, take one of these tutorials, for instance, an introductory tutorial. Um, the short introduction to Galaxy. So click here on the hands-on tutorial for that. Okay, let's say I want to change this title. I think we can make a better title. So what I would do is I would go to the, uh, the tutorial file for this tutorial. Like I said, this is kept in topics and this one is in the introduction topic. So I go there. Uh, under the tutorials folder. And then it's uh, Galaxy Intro Short. Oh, Galaxy Intro Short. And then the tutorial.md file. So this opens now here. And we can just say, I want this title not to be a short introduction to Galaxy, but a short and cool introduction to Galaxy because it's a great tutorial. Um, now you type that, you see immediately that uh, there's some activity in the terminal at the bottom. It has detected your change and it's rebuilding the website. Um, so this should take a second or 10. Okay, you see now it's done. Um, now to see this preview, um, you have to reload this frame. So you can do this by right clicking. Uh, this differs per browser in Firefox, you go to this frame and reload frame in Chrome, it's right there in the first menu. Um, and then you see here that, um, okay, the change we just made, you see how it looks uh, in the preview. Now, um, if you don't uh, like this way of reloading the frame, you can also click on the spot um, button at the top right to open this preview in its own tab, uh, browser tab. So you may have to allow some pop-ups. Um, and navigate to the correct um, page again, but then here you can just reload 
the quote unquote normal way. So, um, and you can continue this. Um, so if you make another change, short and super cool introduction to Galaxy, again, the terminal will, or um, it will detect the change and reload, and then either refresh this frame when it's done, or go to the other tab that you have open. And then you can just do um, refresh, or you can do a, a five or control R, and then you see um, super cool tutorial there. So this is a nice, easy way without installing anything on your computer that you can um, serve the GTN website, make changes, view those changes. Um, so, of course, then the last step in this process is also saving these changes back because right now this all these changes only live here in Gitpod, but you want to contribute them back to um, to the GTN. So you can then um, save them back to your your own fork. So you can either uh, stop this preview or here start a new terminal. Um, and Git is already installed. So if you know a little bit of Git on the command line, um, you can do it this way. So you could um, create a new branch, you can commit the changes and then push those changes. Um, so I'll show you that way and then also show you, because you don't have to do it by at the terminal. You can also, there's buttons uh, within Gitpod to do this. So um, we will check out a new branch. Uh, check out, let's call it um, update title. And so here on the bottom left, you see the branch you're currently on. So it was the default branch main. And as soon as I did that, it was um, update title. So if you don't want to give this command, you can also um, click on this here. And then at the top, you can say create a new branch. So you can type here a name like uh, update title um, and then add it that way. So there are multiple ways to do so then I'll ask you for the branch name and then you give it here a name. So there are always two ways to do this. And I won't because I already made a new title. Um, then we want to commit this change. I can always get status just to see what has changed. Um, So you can see here that I have one file modified. So this is a, exactly the tutorial that I changed the, the uh, title of. So, okay, I'm happy with this. I want to um, commit this and then make a pull request. I'm gonna say uh, git commit uh, dash m for message. I'm gonna say what I did, um, improve. And then I want to say exactly this, this file. So you type the name, I can use tab to automatically complete this. So you just have to type the beginning every time introduction, tutorials tab, galaxy, true short, and tutorial.md. And then you can push it. You're going to push it to your own fork. So you're going to say git, git push origin. Always points to your fork. Um, and then you say again the um, the, the branch name. Uh, so in our case, up date title. And here you see it has pushed. It already gives you a very useful link to say, uh, make the pull request for me. So you can uh, control click or um, to follow the link or click on this box. Um, and then it will open the pull request. 
menu for you and you can make here a pull request. So then here you would, um, you would give a good title. So you can say of uh, Galaxy short introduction. And then, okay, a little bit, you give some information about why you did this, um, anything that people might need to know to review it. And then you can hit this button for, to make the pull request. Now, if you don't want to type these commands in the terminal, um, you could have done all of this also um, via uh, GitPod itself, via the user interface, the graphical interface. Um, so, okay, I'll have to make another change so I can show you. So I'll update the title yet again. Okay, now you see here on the left um, that this icon now has a one. So this, uh, this keeps track of all the changes you've made. So you see here that it detects all the changes. So you can click this plus button to stage changes. Um, another way you can do this. Uh, so if you have made uh, changes to multiple files, you can say commit and then commit all or only those that you've staged before. Um, so then you can do the commit like I did in the terminal. And then once you've committed everything, all the changes, then you can say, um, you want to push this to your remote, uh, to your fork. Um, yeah, and then um, you can make a pull request as well. Um, yeah, so this is a very quick and easy way to get a preview of the GTN website, make some changes, and all of this without installing anything locally on your computer. Oh, and actually one last thing I wanted to tell you is that Gitpod, um, everybody gets 50 hours for free. So when you are done using Gitpod, it's always a good idea to shut down your environment again. So you can do this um, in the top left menu here with the three lines. Um, if you click on that, you can say git pod stop workspace uh, to stop it. And the other way is if you go to if something is running and you go to git pod.io, it'll show you the workspaces. So if it's still running, um, you can open it and it'll be a lot quicker than the first time it was. And here you can also say stop. So it's, it's yeah good idea to, to stop this when you're not working on it. So you check, you save some of those 50 hours you can use. Yeah, and that shuts down pretty quickly. And then, then you see you have no more active workspaces and you can easily start it again. So the first time I showed you, you had to copy the, um, the URL up there. Um, but after you've done that once, you can hit this new workspace button and it'll show you all of the the ones you've used before and that you have access to. And then I can just click on this again to start it. And now one thing you didn't see here is the very first time you do this for a new um, repository, you might have to set some permissions. Uh, Gitpod is very um, convenient with this. So it will um, it'll pop up asking you to set those permissions. Um, but there's also, it's also described here in a box, let me see where that is in the training materials under saving your changes back to GitHub. Um, so the first time it might pop up with a message like this and you say, you need to give this um, extra permissions. So permissions for GitBot to push your changes to GitHub, uh, but then you just click that button and then make sure to select um, this checkbox under public repo as well, and then update permissions. But that's only necessary once. Okay, um, that's it. Thank you all for listening and have fun.